Welcome to my channel once again. Today I will be discussing on sultry Soria rubasta belonging to family Diptarocarpaceae. In India, under genus Soria, four species are found, out of which Soria rubasta is the most important one. Along with teak, it is one of the most important commercial timbers in India. It is the state tree of Jharkhand and Chhattisgarh. In the present video, you will come to know about vast resources of salt forest in India, about their importance, challenges and threats involved in conserving this forest, and finally about propagation and cultivation method of salt tree. Sal is semi evergreen in wetter areas and deciduous in drier areas. It is a large tree attaining normally height of 18 to 32 meter with girth of 1.5 to 2 meter. However, trees of exceptional height and girth have been reported. For example, a tree of 51 meter height was recorded in Haldwani division in UP and a tree of girth 6.4 meter was measured in Udaipur division in Tripura. The tree can even attain 25 meter clear bowl under a favorable condition. In mature tree, one can see pitudinal furrow on bark looks like it has been wrecked by giant claws. It produces creamy white colored flowers and ovoid fruits surrounded by segments of calyx enlarged into five unequal wings. Sal seeds are aerodynamic wonders that are carried up to 90 meter by ordinary wind from the mother tree. Now regarding its distribution. Sal mainly occurs in India, Nepal, Bangladesh and Bhutan. It originated in Africa. In India, it is found as pure crop over extensive area or as sal dominated mixed forest with other trees in Himalayan foothills and central Indian belt. Sal extends from Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura to the foothills of North Bengal, Gorakhpur, Haldwani, Haridwar, Dadadun, and across Yamuna River to the Pauntari Valley of Himachal Pradesh in west. In central India, it occurs in Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Odisha, Jharkhand, and also in stray pockets in Srikakulam district in Andhra Pradesh. It is missing in South India, where Surya Tolura and Surya Tumuguya are found. As per 1971-72 report, India had salt forest area about 11.6 million hectare, that is about 14.2% of total forest area. Presently, salt forest area is about 8 million hectare, that is about 11% of total forest area. This figure is based on forest type mapping of India project report submitted by Forest Survey of India in 2012. Now about utility of salt tree and salt forest. Its hardwood is very strong and highly durable. It is used in making doors and window frames for roofing and flooring in house construction. It is also used for boat building in making lorry and bus bodies, railway, slippers, etc. Sal poles are used for overhead electrical transmission and distribution lines, scaffolding, mining materials, etc. It produces resin called sal dummer, which is used in making incense, wood varnish, and traditional medicine. Sal leaves are used by ethnic communities to make biodegradable plates and bowels as an economic activity. In Ranchi district in Jharkhand, a single family can earn about rupees 25,000 annually. Sal seeds are also collected and sold by tribals. Sal seeds contain 12 to 19 percent fat, which is used by soap, chocolate, and confectionery industries. Around 30 million rural people and tribals depend on sal forest. As medicinal uses, sal resin is claimed to be used traditionally to treat bleeding, wounds, ulcers, dysentery, cough, bronchitis, asthma, TB, gonorrhea, toothache, and various skin disorders. As cultural value, in Odisha, Santhal tribal community worship sal tree and they maintain a sacred place in sal grove called Jahera, where they perform folk music and dance. Rabha tribal community in Gwalpara district 
in Assam celebrate Theatre of Nature Festival under the Saltris as an ethnic and social tradition. For Hindus, Sal is believed to be associated with Lord Vishnu. As ecological value, Sal tree has unique ecology that supports a wide variety of flora and fauna. About 500 undergrowth species are associated with Sal forest. Sal trees also host about 64 lichen species. Sal forests are good habitat for wildlife. For example, Sal trees dominate the landscapes of Kanha National Park, Bandhagar National Park, Jim Corbett National Park, Rajaji National Park, Sitabani Wildlife Reserve, and Jallapara National Park. Salt trees also provide various ecosystem services. Now we will discuss about challenges and threats to salt forest. Natural regeneration is a problem in some salt areas. Viability period of salt seeds is very short. It requires seed fall period to coincide with the onset of monsoon. For germination. Even after germination, salt seedlings in some localities die back year after year and sometimes salt seedlings take 15 years for establishment. This problem is due to inadequate sunlight reaching to forest floor, inability of roots of seedlings to reach mineral soil because of thick layer of leaf litters and for other reasons like frost, drought and fire. The present day salt forests are threatened by deforestation due to diversion of forest for mining, resettlement, infrastructure development project like road expansion and also due to encroachment. Fire is another major threat to salt forest. Even though older salt trees are resistant to fire but it causes such trees vulnerable to disease and insect attack. However, Control burning is beneficial especially before seeding for good regeneration. Control burning prevents the wet salt forest from converting to moist broadleaf forest while uncontrolled fire may revert dry salt forest to deciduous forest. Overgrazing, excessive lopping, excessive collection of seeds, resin also adversely affect salt forest. Deadly beetle salt hard borer is also another threat. Nutrient and moisture stress also cause soil mortality. Climate change is also a threat. Rising temperature in Dehradun is causing early flowering and seeding affecting natural regeneration. Now regarding artificial regeneration. Artificial regeneration in soil was started in 1896 in Jalpaiguri division in West Bengal by sowing seeds in lines. Later on, in the same division, in 1916, Tongia method was evolved in which cultivators' families called Tongiaders were allotted 0.4 hectare of clear land per family for two years. The Tongiaders made continuous lines of 30 cm wheat by hoeing at 2 m apart, sowed salt seeds in those lines and cultivated their field crops between the lines. In southern West Bengal, in dry salt forest, continuous trenches were also made for sowing salt seeds. Seedlings raised in salt dunas and bamboo baskets were also planted in salt lines. Due to good success, this method was introduced in few districts in eastern UP and also in Assam, including Garu Hills, now in Meghalaya. In UP, four years Tongia and in Assam, three years Tongia were practiced. The Tongiaders took care of salt seedlings during the Tongia period and later on forest department did tending and thinning operations. The method became unworkable after some time. So forest department started raising salt plantations departmentally. Presently, salt seedlings raised in poly bags are usually planted for raising plantation. Sal prefers annual rainfall range between 1500 to 3000 mm and annual day temperature between 28 to 34 degrees Celsius. It can be grown up to 1500 meter elevation and little more. It prefers well-drained sandy loam soils and open areas. 
for raising seedlings. Ripe seeds are collected in the month of May June. Due to short viability, fresh, well filled seeds are dibbled directly in poly bags of size 6 inch by 9 inch, containing soil, sand, and farmyard manure in the ratio 2 is to 1 is to 1. Preferably, soil should be collected from salt forest. Seeds are also sown in seed bed and later on small seedlings are pricked and transplanted in poly bags. One to two years old seedlings can be planted in 45 cm cubic pits at 2 meter F spacing. In hilly tract, trenches of required dimension can be dug along the contour for planting seedlings after refilling. After planting, tending, thinning operations are carried out periodically. Parasitic climbers like Laurentas should be cut and removed. Dead and dying unhealthy trees which harbor sal hardborer also should be removed. Usually under high forest regeneration system, rotation period of sal is about 120 to 150 years. While under coppice regeneration system, rotation period of 30 to 60 years is prescribed. Copy system may be more appropriate for private growers. So far, sal is not attractive for private growers and farmers due to its slow growing nature requiring long rotation period. So its plantation activities are confined in forest in its native states and that to, to a limited extent. The forest department should grow more sal plantations in degraded land. The actual reasons why it is so difficult to grow salt trees outside its natural ranges need to be explored. The foresters have the great challenges and opportunities for managing salt forest. They need to prevent degradation of salt forest by effective conservation and management practices and also to see that the needs of the local forest department communities are taken care of for sustainability of salt forest. Salt forest should not be sacrificed for planting other fast-growing species. The forest departments of salt-bearing states should develop improved planting models and should explore possibility to extend its cultivation on farmland and other private land. Development of suitable salt varieties through genetic improvement will be helpful in this endeavor. Thank you.